Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera. Alhamdulillah nahmadu wa nusalli ala rasulil karim. Rakan-rakan menteri, saudara duta besar, saudara Nazri, sahabat lama. Ramai tetap tamu yang bersama di sini ada gubernur Bank Negara ada KSU Kementerian Luar Negeri pengurusi Suranjaya Security ramai jadi saya harap dapat dimanfaatkan dalam perbincangan di meja-meja berkenaan bagi pihak rakan-rakan menteri dan perwakilan yang hadir saya ucap terima kasih kepada jatuh kuasa diaspora yang menganjurkan majlis yang permai dan mengajak anak-anak muda mahasiswa mahasiswi untuk bersama dengan kita di setiap uh, program yang kita adakan di luar negara kita pastikan ada pertemuan untuk menjelaskan dasar negara dan masalah perkembangan mutakhir di negara so may I express my profound gratitude and thanks to the organizers other the embassy under my friend Nazri and um, the various organizations for the splendid uh, arrangements and inviting us all including our uh, students now we are fortunate that uh, the reception in New York has been very positive partly to the effort of all our government agencies embassy and the mission so let me begin by expressing my appreciation and thanks to the embassy, the, the mission, and all the friends who has helped make this visit a great success. This is essential. You see, throughout history, and in all societies, you would appreciate one pertinent point, that civilizations can rise, civilizations can fall. The noted Muslim sociologist Abdurrahman Ibn Khaldun wrote in his Muqaddimah the a nomadic society becomes quite sedentary in a city-state, Medina, with the esprit de corps working together, they can rise, build a new culture establish a modern society with certain ideals to improve the welfare of the society. This idealism has helped forge this new nation. But sometimes after generations, leaders tend to be complacent, corrupt, abuse their power, and you can see a decline in this realization after the third, fourth generation. The noted American historian Arnold Toynbee used this thesis and talked about a cyclical theory of civilization. Civilizations can rise, civilization can fall. It will rise because of uh, the ideals, the policies that can generate growth, equity, justice. A society based on principles and values. Let us take the case of the United States of America. If one is familiar with Alexis de Tocqueville, a noted French philosopher who visited America in the early period. He wrote a wonderful, uh, should I say, a compelling case to defend the fabric of the original fabric of the American society. His book entitled Democracy in America. Now, Alexis de Tocqueville's thesis essentially say that the origins of the new American state is based on strong core values of freedom, of justice, of independence. And it stems from a clear conviction and that is stemming from the habits of the heart it's important the habits of the heart the habits of the heart of the society they, they cherish freedom that give uh, meaning to the state through 
good values. Minimum justice. That's why in the early period, you find this society wanting independence from the colonial British and emerge as a cohesive force. Why? Through the habits of the heart. They win, they won freedom. They cherish justice. They want the state to survive as a new nation, a successful nation. But according to Arnold Toynbee, not necessarily about the United States, but societies in general and nations in general can rise because of these ideals, but may fall because of poor governance, corruption, abuse of power, and lackadaisical attitude, particularly among leaders. So you must remember that um, Malaysia is not necessarily uh, a state, a nation that will continue to survive and excel if we do not take note of the observation by people like Ibn Khaldun or Arnold Toynbee in the United States, the historian. Now, we have come to a stage in Malaysia. If you in New York, you in the States, who have been here for 40 years, 20 years, 10 years, who realize there was a period that people accord respect and confidence to this new emerging country named Malaysia. Then there was a period that Malaysia was known to be a corrupt nation, a nation with leaders who squandered wealth. That is the perception. Maybe right, maybe partly right, maybe true, may not be true, but the perception was pervasive among fund managers, investors, potential investors in this country. Notwithstanding what they say, I would suggest this. We together, we Malaysians, be those living in Malaysia or here, the diaspora, must realize, must seize this opportunity. Let us begin anew. Let us prove that Malaysia can succeed. And my dream, and so is my team, is to prove a point that we, Malaysians, Malays, Chinese, Indians, Sabahan, Sarawakians, regardless, have this determination that we will emerge as a strong nation in the region. But, we must start with this clear position. Enough of racism. Enough of corruption. Enough of religious bigotry. We want more unity, more work, and clarity of purpose. So I would say, alhamdulillah, we are stable. This government, the unity government, inshallah, will continue for the next four and a half years, steady, resolute, clarity of policies. And thanks to my colleagues, after the initial, uh, should I say, not necessarily turbulence, initial um, tensions, now, now, September, in the spirit of Independence National Day, the people have the right to express themselves freely. Not to destroy, not to abuse, not to insult other people's religions. Not to burn their sacred books. That's not what freedom is all about. So, we have created a series of policies. The Madani economy, the energy transition plan, and um, the industrial master plan, where they say, well, another plan. No, no. Energy transition plan is a new plan with a 
makes and hub in Malaysia with renewable energy, with a commitment to green technology, which is unique. The industrial master plan is not a hatch of the old plan. It's a departure from the old plan. It focuses on the specific missions and new thrust. And last week, we approved the midterm review of the second, the 12th Malaysia plan. It's not just an ordinary review of the old plan. It's a shift of emphasis, shift of policy, a shift of direction, taking into account of the new government's policy of good governance, democratic accountability, and wanting to move Malaysia as a success, a vibrant economy, successful nation, economically, socially, educationally. So next month, I will introduce the second Madani budget. Malaysia, my dear friends, is a trading nation. If we succeed in promoting investments, and ensuring there's more trade, then we succeed as a nation. Uh, this is where you have a role. We want every single Malaysian in the United States be treated and consider themselves ambassadors of Malaysia in the United States. You represent the new Malaysian spirit. You represent a Malaysian committed to our ideals. You represent a Malaysia that want the country to succeed. And you should do whatever is necessary to encourage your colleagues, Malaysians and Americans to understand, know Malaysia, appreciate what we want to do and increase trade and investments into Malaysia. That is your mission. Why I'm here tonight is to appeal to you. Of course, the chief ambassador is here, but the rest are all our ambassadors of goodwill, focusing on trade and investments. You know the reason? The reason is pure and simple. Malaysia has this enormous potential to rise. Malaysia has the necessary resources, qualified workforce, and a strong fundamentals in terms of the economy. And our dream, my dream, and your dream is to make sure Malaysia rise again. And I from the bottom of my heart, other than expressing my profound thanks and appreciation, would say this, that I have full trust and confidence in Malaysians. Although some of you say, I have been here in the United States for the last 40 years, some say 20 years, but you are truly a Malaysian who loves the country and wants the country to succeed. Adi, kalau ada soalan-soalan yang susah, menteri jawab. Soalan yang umum, perdana menteri jawab.